Let's do a little dig into some of the gate inputs of polymaths. For the sake of clarity, we're running a very basic signal flow here. Polymaths is chained to the control inputs of the QXGs, and the audio is coming from the... Let's activate each channel of polymaths one at a time so we can hear what each channel sounds like as it's currently set up. We're just passing static frequencies from the oscillators at this point, so... Each channel will always play the same note. Now, we're also clocking the X and Y channels of Rene. Let's use their gate outputs to get something going. I'm in round mode with span set to one. Again, about as simple as we can get, just so we can keep things very understandable as we begin our exploration into reset and accumulate. So let's patch the X gates to activate. This just simply steps through the channels one by one, just as we were doing with press point a moment ago. And we'll patch Y gates to reset. Which will jump us back to channel one each time the Y gate is output. So as we change up the pattern of Y gates, we get different reset patterns emerging. Let's also remove some of the X gates to add some rhythmic interest. Now for accumulate. When this input is patched, any activations will wait for gate high before taking place. So if we patch a dummy cable to accumulate, we can see the channels turning orange as they attempt to activate. Sending a gate activates all the accumulated channels at once. So let's use the Cartesian gates. We can control the sparseness or density of the pattern in a different way here from how we control it with reset. sparseness means longer accumulations, longer time between activations, and thereby often more channels accumulated and activating all at once. Sending more frequent gates lets us release accumulations more often. If we send a gate at every clock, then channels don't have to accumulate at all. these different juxtaposed gate patterns controlling different relations within the activation and channel index structure of the polymaths, 
almost any change we make will destabilize the pattern in a different way. For example, uh, removing a stage on the access page of the Y channel lets us gradually phase offset the reset pattern so that it continually evolves. Let's tap some individual channels of the polymaths for some filter modulation. We'll take a few through the jumbler. And we'll pass them through to the QPOS. Let's slowly rotate with this math channel. Jumbling these outputs will decouple the filter modulations from the individual node events that we've so far been associating with these channels. We can also voltage control individual parameters like the oscillations rate fall time of the activated functions. Using modulation dissemination. Remember this means that the channel will read the value at the CV input at the moment of activation and then hold the value on that channel only until the next time that particular channel gets activated. This will add a little subtle malleability to the identities of the individual channels as we go. Modulating span will give us variations on the path through the channels. The further we get a field from the original stepped sequence, the harder it may be to parse the specifics of how the gate streams are affecting things. But we can easily remember that the more gates we enable on Y, the more often it resets. Well, the fewer gates we enable on C, the more often it accumulates, or the longer it accumulates. Thank <laughs> you.
you have a favorite way to patch polymaths? Do you patch it with QXG or elsewhere or both? What are you looking forward to? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching and happy patching.